We are live. We are live. No warning on this, literally. It wasn't scheduled. It's probably going to be a small room, but I was going to record a video and I thought, why don't I just go live and kind of explain this live? This will be literally 10 minutes. I've said that before. Sometimes my lives go like six hours. I'll do my best to make this quick. I want people to know this because this piece of information changed I'll change my life. And like money's not everything, but when you no longer have to worry about money or when your money starts working for you, it does increase the quality of your life. I've spent the last four hours this morning talking to people that we can potentially partner with to run a charity. It's like I have time to do that. So I'm kind of excited for today. Um, again, I didn't schedule this. I probably should have schedule this for next week. Uh, do let me know if you can hear me and see me. I know we only have a few people here. Sometimes we have over a hundies, but that's when I schedule them. But again, I think this is just more important. If this helps one person, literally one person, I'm like, yep, my job is done. So please do let me know. Participation is always mandatory. You will get a lot more out of this by participating instead of being a passive bystander. Okay, I'm going to share something here. I'm just going to share my screen here. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Let's do this one. No, let's do this one. Okay, sweet. Um, And literally, I know I always say like, hey, only be like eight, 10 minutes. We have a portfolio review call coming up at one o'clock in the UIG. If you are in the UIG, please join these. Um, we review people's portfolios, which we have a whole portfolio section here. Anyone can post in here and you can see people's portfolios and their actual earnings uh, to the tune of a couple hundred bucks per day, a couple thousand per day. And you can literally see what they're doing, what they're investing in. So that's super cool. So I am going to be getting out of here. Um, please do let me know as well. If you want access to the DeFi as a business course, we are almost done. This is going to be free, by the way. Part one foundations is done. Part two, the opportunities. So we can actually go into DeFi opportunities. And part three, it's almost done. But we're going to enter pools together, use different tools together. Uh, we're going to review some portfolios. So I'm actually going to take portfolios from the portfolio review section. Um, it's going to be awesome. Seven rules for entering a liquidity pool. Please do let me know if you want this. Uh, this should be ready by the end of the week. And I'll just be zipping it out to people in the comments. All righty. Uh, where are we at here? Loud and clear. Brian, thanks for being here. So there is a something called uh, i posted about this today at some point there's something called the velocity of money and this is just what i really wanted to bring today really really quick when we understand this everything we're taught about money is backwards and the people who are behind the scenes relaying this information to all of us peasants are the people who are behind the banks the people who don't have your best interest in mind. I grew up in a trailer park. Immigrant parents, many people share the same story-ish or at least a version of it. I wasn't taught anything about money. I was taught save money, work hard, you know, get a good income, whatever. That's the complete opposite. And, and what we're taught is, hey, let's give money to the banks, put your savings in a bank, and then the bank will use the velocity of money to be actually able to create large amounts of wealth for a very small percentage of people. Savings used to be, and some of us were alive for this, if you put money in a savings account, you could get paid 18% or more for your saving. That saving money made sense back then. As you can see, we do not get paid to save money anymore. We do not want to save. The wealthiest people I know have no money in their bank account. They care about cash flow. Please let me know if that makes sense. They care about cash flow. That's all they want. They want their money working for them. Now, not all cash flow is created equal because then we're taught to lie. Hey, just take your money and put it in at 8%. You know, just compound interest for the next 40 years. You have no control of your money. You have no liquidity of that, and we'll take care of you in 40, 50 years. That's also dead. It's dying and pretty much dead. So I'm going to kind of read. I wrote an article here. I'm just going to read it out um, if that's cool with y'all. You can hear me, see me so far. Let me know if anything lands as I go through this. By the way, please, please let me know if you want access to the free course. I'm going to spend a few hours, end of the week, hitting up comments for people who requested it. It's called DeFi as a Business, and I'm going deep 
Um, so it's on the same platform that the UIG is built on, but we're going into deep foundations, um, looking at a bunch of different opportunities and we go deep. Like I don't mess around. We're going deep into different protocols and exactly how I run my DeFi business. Um, and ultimately, um, different rules for entering different pools, um, entering pools together, different resources, different links, DeFi insurance, different master classes. It's going to be a good time. So do let me know if you want access to it. Please do um, grab it. It's free. So in the world of money, there are two ways people go about building their wealth. Uh, I was in the first bucket for most of my life. Well, I'm not that old, but for the first 25 years of my life. And everyone I know is pretty much in bucket one. Everyone I used to know is in bucket one. Everyone I know now is in bucket two. Bucket one is on one side. You've got the folks who prefer playing it safe. They stick their money in low interest accounts or passive income investments that earn them 8% a year. They charge management fees. They hope for steady growth, but often end up losing out to inflation and market ups and downs. Do not forget about inflation. 8% a year is not good anymore. You are not getting ahead at 8%, 10%, 12% a year. You're not getting ahead. You Maybe best case, you're breaking even. Then there are the upper and middle class rich folk who understand that to really make your money work for you, you've got to keep it moving, the velocity of money. How quickly can I get my money working for me, pull out the initial, and then still control this asset, still control this cash flow, this, this cash flow producing asset, and then take my money and have it work for me again? If you start studying investing at any higher level than what's kind of taught, this is one of the first concepts that's taught. It's called different things, but this is one of the the, the basic, uh, or I guess it's more advanced, but it would be a basic concept in the advanced world of investing. Because a lot of people have the are are under the impression that, oh, I'm making 12% a year compounded over 35 years. I'm like, there's no velocity to your money there. And it's locked. We want it working for us. So um, they're all about making the money hustle and bustle while uh, doing the most of it, doing the most with it they can in the shortest time period. This is called the velocity of money. Simply put, you put your money into something that makes you more money. You get back your initial investment as quick as possible. We look for 12 months or less. And then we can take that initial and have it work for us again. Have it work for us again. Have it work for us again. Now, some people might say, Lucas, to get your money back in 12 months, you'd have to make 100% on your money. And I'm like, yeah. That seems so scammy to most people because they trust what they're told. Hey, we'll give you 12%. Wall Street doesn't make 12%. They don't make 100%. They're well into the triple digits for returns, taking companies public, et cetera, and they give you a little piece of it. But if you saw what Wall Street and what banks actually make, you'd be like, holy. Um, we would demand a bigger piece of that because we're taking all the risk when we give our money to banks and Wall Street. We're taking all of the risk and they're they're just using OP, other people's money. So in a nutshell, you continue to recycle your money. Please let me know if this makes sense. Following this formula helps you build wealth way faster than just leaving your money to collect dust in some low interest account or even a low interest, which I call 8 to 10%. I see these people on Instagram. How do you get wealthy? Oh, just invest in your IRA or in your... TFSA or in your whatever for the next 40 years and you'll be wealthy. And I'm like, that's not wealth. That's called like literally just giving your money to someone all the way up until you die to hopefully just be able to have enough so you can just maintain your current lifestyle. That's not getting wealthy. It's not getting wealthy. Uh, why isn't this moving? So uh, one common problem I see is, um, and I face this too, is like there's no sense of urgency to it. But I'm like, if we can look, and and again, I talk about money a lot, but when I actually say money, I mean time. The only reason I wanted to make money was so I could buy my time back, so I could do cool things like research and write articles and help other people. And um, we're, we're partnering up with some people and trying to get the pieces in place for some charity work, boots on the ground charity work, building some schools. I got the time to do that. I, I, there's no way I would have had the time to do what I do if I didn't get my money right and get my money mindset right and understand VOM or velocity of money. Inflation is increasing. We all know it. We just ignore it. I want to create a little widget where it's on our computer and it's showing, you know, $1 or like a hundred dollars and the value of a hundred dollars to like the hundredth decimal or something. And you would see it chip away every second. It would create urgency in us. Money's we're not doing this for money. 
just to be clear. That's a shitty way to live, in my opinion. We are doing this to buy back our time and to escape this vacuum or this black hole that, um, you know, society or our, well, our society, our systems have created. So with that said, um, I'll kind of keep reading here and then I'll, I'll get out of here. But what's really funny to me is that the banks and big financial institutions, they tell us to park our money with them, promising it'll always be there for us. But behind the scenes, they're playing a whole different game. They are the ones that are keeping your money working for you. If you want to Google fractional reserve banking, you'll have a better understanding of it. Uh, most people already understand that concept. But it's like they're taking your money and making more of it and keeping it moving. So if we want to become wealthy, we have to think like the wealthy think. Mm, beyond that, we have to do like the wealthy do. And what do the wealthy do? Well, fractional reserve banking, first of all, but they keep the money moving. Now, we can't necessarily create money out of thin air the same way a bank can, but we can use the same concept. How do I take a chunk of money invested in something, get a return on it as quick as I can, pull out the initial, and then have it work for me again? It's 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 if if you kind of draw it out in my mind, I see it much the same way as fractional reserve banking, except not as criminal. Uh, they can do it, we can't, but it's the same concept. We've got to think like the bank. How do you keep your money moving? How can you make it work for you in different ways? So, and I say this a lot, instead of aiming for a big net worth number, focus on building a portfolio of investments that keep bringing in more than you spend. And then you reinvest. Now, we don't want to go for 12%. We go for, can we get our initial back in 12 months or less? That's, but yeah, if you're still reading, you probably have a better idea of why we love the DeFi game so much. It's the velocity on our money. So I'll add a little PS. Wall Street sees triple-digit returns on your money, by the way. And they give you a nice little 8% return a year to reward you for all the risk you're taking. It's wild how much money they make off you. Um, when you invest into their funds. People really need to understand this. What's up? People really need to understand this. Um, to me, it's not about catching some Bitcoin pump. That's a little bonus. It's not going to make you wealthy. Getting a million dollars tomorrow ain't going to make you wealthy. A lot of people blow it. A lot of people blow it. I didn't get a million bucks, but I got 400, 450, almost 500 grand at one point in my life through business, and I blew it. I thought I knew what I was doing. I blew it. I may have known how to make money, but I didn't know how to, um, I didn't understand the concept of velocity of money. Friends, what's up? So this goes beyond just crypto and DeFi. People, I think, sometimes get thrown off when I say like, I'm being blunt for effect here, but like, I don't give a shit about crypto and DeFi. It's probably kind of what separates us is like, we're not really like crypto bros looking for pumps. I think it is the best opportunity available to us right now and for the foreseeable future to actually take use of the velocity of money, to use it as the tool it is, but it's not the end all be all. I don't even think anything is um, because it's all made up. It's all one big game. To me, the only reason that I'm in crypto, that I'm in DeFi, that I'm in what we do is because it is the most control of, I have full control of the assets. I have full control of the liquidity. I can make well over 100% a year, which is kind of our target. Oftentimes, we're doing 200 plus, especially in these markets. So I can pull out the initial, have it work for me, velocity of money, and, and, be getting paid in my DeFi business. Please let me know if this makes sense. We got a really quiet crowd today and I'm not going to continue. Um, participation is mandatory, not for me, but for you. I want this stuff to land. This isn't, I don't do passive classes. We got to get involved. You should see me when we're in person. We'll be doing push-ups and stuff. Getting you, your body. We, when we emotionally get connected to what we're learning, it lands at a deeper level. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I have velocity of money. Cool. And then do nothing with it. And in three years, they're broker than they were today. And I'm like, not on my freaking watch. I don't care if you never pay me a dime. Not on my watch. You're here on YouTube. Not on my watch. This ain't your typical channel. Anywho, enough of my rant here. And that's that. And the velocity of money, I see DeFi as an opportunity for that. We're not married to any coin. We're not married to any token. We're not married to any project. 
don't care. We don't speculate on the markets. We don't hope and pray something goes up. That's not investing. And if I can get paid in assets that are also appreciating versus the U.S. dollar is depreciating, bonus. And that's why I see what I see. Uh, that's why I see the opportunity that I see in DeFi. Um, there are other opportunities in the world that I think are better than crypto and DeFi, but you, you've got to have access to large amounts of capital or know the right people. Um, I mean, I know people who will do 300% on their money, but they're getting into $100 million plus deals. Um, okay, so one other thing I want to share and then um, I do have a call here in 15 minutes. But before I do that, Brian, uh-oh. I just joined the UIG about a week ago. I have a small test liquidity pool investment that is making three bucks a day. We'll have my initial back in roughly three months. Yeah. Right now, because the volumes are so inflated, we're seeing really, really good returns. And so we're taking advantage of that. I think the – um, Brian, did you see the opportunity of the week today? I don't know if you did. Every Wednesday, we post a DeFi opportunity of the week. David does all the TA. We got we do all the research. Go check it out, Brian. Um, it's it's juicy. There's a lot of volume on optimism right now. And um, if that if we continue getting paid the earnings we're getting paid on it, you could have a return on your investment in a month. In a blue chip, blue chip stuff too. Not like um, ain't ain't no freaking nothing. Uh, so good timing. It ain't no zero Ponzi. It ain't no, it ain't no Ponzi. It's a zero Ponzi. I just saw someone post it. Good, 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 good. Um, I'm listening to what I'm driving. Yeah, don't, don't text and drive. But I just want people to participate because I know when we get emotionally invested. Um, actually, I kind of, I'll share something else with you here. Uh, where are we here? I, I write a lot of articles because I like to teach stuff. But um. I don't know where this was. A few days ago, I posted this. Where are we? Uh, I know I posted it somewhere. Hold up. This is worth... Okay. Give me a moment. Is it this? No, right here. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, this was developed by a guy named Edgar Dale. Uh, DeFi and investing is a game of doing. So uh, after two weeks, we remember 10 to 20 to 30% of what we just read, hear, or see. 50% of what we hear and see. 70% of what we say or get involved with. 90% of what we say and do. And pretty damn close to 100% of what we teach. So the more involved you get and the more emotionally it's called the cone of learning. The more emotionally you get involved with the material, you know, joining a discussion, you're already retaining 50%, practicing and doing 75, 80%, teaching others 90 to 100%. So it's called the cone of learning, right? Yeah, cone of learning by Edgar Dale, which is why I'm so huge on like participation, so huge on why we have groups and all of these things. Uh, if you are in the UIG, please check out the opportunity of the week, March 6th. Super juicy. Uh, it's doing a thousand percent, but that's not going to hold just because volume of the last 24 hours has been so high. But I bet you it'll average 500 percent. It's a super blue chip pool uh, and a really wide range, a 40 percent wide range in this. Um, all the TAs done for you in here. So do check it out. And if you want access into our free course, it's almost done. Please let me know in the comments whether you're live or watching the replay. I'm going to be dialing in the start here, just how to navigate this stuff. Part one, the foundations is done. Part two, the opportunity is done. Uh, I go deep. I don't hold back on this at all. Um, and we also talk about all the ways you can lose money so you can ensure that you are aware of what you're doing here. And part three, I'm going to wrap this up today of uh, where we're finding opportunities, different rules, entering, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then we're going to give you some extra resources. Uh, you can also ensure a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, a lot of your capital in DeFi, especially as your business grows. We've got clients who've got millions of dollars in DeFi, and like it's insured. So as your capital grows, again, the velocity of money, a million bucks may seem like so much, but with the velocity of money, you can do the math on it. I think we're just taught to think, oh, getting rich quick is a scam, and I disagree. 
because everyone I know who has built wealth, I mean, I know people who've built wealth and they're retired and they're not even 30 yet. Like they got rich quick. Ain't no scam to it. Now, a get rich quick one click opportunity that you just click. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to learn anything. You're just going to get rich and you're going to drive Lambos and have private jets. Like probably not going to happen. But if you're willing to study and understand concepts and understand basically I never went to school or university or college or anything, so I didn't have to unlearn it. But when I work with people on a closer basis around this, a lot of it is like unconditioning all the programming and all the bullshit to make room for all the new. A lot of it was, um, a lot of it was just paradigms that we've been taught that serve a very small percentage of people at the top. Very small. We're talking a percentile of a percentile at the top and they want us thinking that way and i'm like i think those walls are crumbling because people are realizing hey wall street's doing 250 300 500 percent sometimes more returns on their investments with other people's money aka mine we're just not shown that because they don't want us knowing that what if we normalized 100 150 percent a year returns on our investment portfolios Just saying. All right, good. With that said, I will get out of here. Uh, can 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 y'all leave just one thing from here? Can y'all leave one thing that landed? I know this was a quick live. It wasn't planned, but I just wanted to share it. I want more people understanding what we just talked about, the velocity of money, because it's a concept that goes far beyond just crypto and DeFi. doesn't matter. Actually, doesn't matter what you're investing in at that point. It's the velocity of money and your savings account or your retirement account or your you know company pension, whatever accounts, whatever country you live in, it's all called different things. There is zero leverage for you and there's no velocity of money. Do not listen to the talking heads on Twitter who say just invest in this for the next 40 years because what you're losing is 40 years of your life while you do so. And that's a to me, that's a bad trade. And it's not guaranteed. Yeah, I think I'll take that one step further just to be clear. I think you can get rich in absolutely anything. Um, some of the most boring stuff you can get rich in. I don't think it's necessarily always down to the opportunity. Now, I think there's better opportunity vehicles than others. I think DeFi is one of the best opportunity vehicles. But if we're still applying the same mindset that we've tried to apply from different opportunities we've tried and we're applying that into DeFi, we will lose. I see it a lot. Oh, I tried eight different things. That's always like a big warning flag for me. Um, oh man, I tried eight different things, but none of them work. So I'm going to do this now. And I'm like, why did other people make money in those eight other things? Why couldn't you? Um, now again, there might be alignment and personality stuff and um, strengths and weaknesses and all that. Totally get it. But uh, that's a bit of a red flag to me is, okay, how are we thinking here? What's the mindset going into this? That will dictate a lot. So good, so good, so good. Thanks, Chill Excited, for everything's going good. I'm happy you're happy about it. Uh, what would you do to get the initial capital for what, – what would you do to get the initial capital for investing in DeFi? What would you do to get the initial capital – um, well, I mean, we've had people sell stuff when I quit the oil rigs, I had to liquidate a lot of my stuff cause I was, I had no income and I needed it. And I had two options, go work for it or get creative. And I liquidated things around me that I no longer needed. I remember like I was 25, I was like selling my PlayStation. I was like selling a bunch of stuff that I just was like, I don't need this. And I got my hands on capital or work for it. We all trade our time for money at the beginning. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just trade your time for money and then take that money and get it to working for you as fast as you can. Time is of the essence. And I think a lot of people are being slow and lazy about it. And I'm just like, you don't understand that speed counts. I want to front load every business I've started, everything I've done. I want to front load the risk. I want to front load the risk and build as much momentum. And then as I start building momentum, I want to start um, 
Well, as the velocity of money, I guess it's the same idea. I want to front load the risk. I want to make as much as possible in the shortest period of time. I don't mind taking on more risk up front and putting in more time and work and effort. And as that grows, I want to start de-risking until my initial is out. And now I'm making money with infinite return, basically. And then I could take this money that I've taken out of it and put it to work again, put it to work again, put it to work again. Zero Ponzi hustle. I started small, $100 a month. Good, man. And I'm at $10 before the end of the year. You're at $10 per day. That's 300 bucks a month. Good. That's kind of like the first stage we try to get people to sell your kids. You could do that. You could. I don't know if it's legal in most of the world, but you could. Yeah, I got rid of a lot of my 401k stuff when I started actually learning about real investing and I took the uh I took the um penalty on it. I was like, you guys are a freaking joke. Um I was making six, seven, eight percent, whatever I was doing, but after I actually worked out the numbers and started understanding investing, I took a lot of it out that I was putting in there as I was working jobs or whatever, uh back in my twenties, and I put it to work for me and um the return that I've got it on it is nothing even close to what I could have even wanted in a lifetime of what they were doing for me. And um, it bought me my time back because that's what I'm, that's the only reason I invest in, by the way, is to buy my time back. It's not to have a bigger and bigger bank account. I could give a shit less how big my bank account is. Uh, it fluctuates a lot. I don't care. What do I have coming in this month? And how leveraged is it? You can buy them back later, 100%. When they're grown up, someone else can. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. I'm also willing to work on the rigs. That was like the freaking hardest period of my life, and it taught me so much. Yeah, I mean, I guess Stallone did it too. He sold his dog, got access to capital, and bought it back. Go through your house and sell everything you haven't used for three months. This is so good. Um, I, I remember doing that. Um, and I was like, wow, you should see me now. I'm like, I'm a pretty minimalist. Uh like if I haven't used it in three months, I don't sell it anymore, but I'll give it to someone. I just get rid of it. I'm like, I don't want to be weighed down by all that crap. Okay, I got to jump on a portfolio review call. I know some of you are in the UIG. Please, please take advantage of the portfolio review section. You can see, you can get access to everyone else's portfolios. There are people doing big dollars here. There are some people doing big dollars and some people just starting. Um, completed, they're at three bucks a day. Some people are at 10 bucks a day. I think uh, there was someone else I was looking at here. Yeah, collected 6,133 fees and doing between 100 to 350 per day. Um, and you get access to people's portfolios. Then we pick one or two of them and we do a portfolio review every Wednesday live, but we review portfolios real time. Uh, so please, if, if you haven't gone in here and posted your portfolio for review, please do so. If you're part of the UIG, uh, this is people... I get a lot of messages of like, thank you for adding the portfolio review because this has been a game changer for me. So do check that out. 250 per day today. So good. Ah, oh, guys, I, I appreciate all the love. So good. We are on a freaking mission. I am intrinsically the portfolio review section. Dad jokes. Uh, the I am so intrinsic. People are just like, oh, I sometimes get, oh, you're always just like trying to sell. And I'm like, yep. Yeah. Like that, that is what life is. And if I absolutely believe in something, uh, every once in a while, some people will come around and selling uh, maybe their religion or their something or their, uh, there's a, uh, some teenage or some young adults doing roofing. They start a roofing company. They've come here once or twice. And I so love the hustle. I love it because I can tell when someone believes in what they're doing. I want to buy from that person. I just dropped 40 K on something, a coaching program, uh, four days ago and it was about four months, and I know this guy. He's been kind of pushing me, and not pushing, but just like revisiting it. And today I just sent him a text like, thank you for not giving up on that. Um, I've, I've already seen massive changes in my life, and I know for some people that might be hard to understand, like $40,000 for coaching? Like what? What are you learning? It's not even about that. Um, it's about so much more. And Anyway, maybe I'll do a live on it at some point because I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into myself and into my education. And I've never gone to school, by the way, like a traditional school. And it's I've gotten multiples of returns on that. But what I'm saying is he believed in it. 
And I can tell when someone does. That's who I want to work with. I know what we're doing and I know the results we're getting. And so to me, I'm like, you can keep going on YouTube and trying to find piece together information, but there's something about being in community and something about getting it live and getting real-time updates and being able to ask real-time questions and getting a response instead of waiting for it or searching for it. The time it saves you is insane, which is why I typically don't consume free stuff. I want to pay for it because I want it quicker and I want access and I want to move velocity of money. It is also true, I think, in velocity for like results in life. Oh, maybe I'll do it next month. I'm like, you already lost. I'll do it next. You lost. Okay, well, I'll just kind of think about it for what you lost. You literally have already lost. Anywho. Um, yeah, so good. I had that realization. I was in mind for about 10 years or something. And I was like, this is when I actually started learning about money. I was like, nope. And the bank will do everything they can to talk you out of getting it out. Um. There we go. I love it. I love I do I love people who make offers and sell stuff. I'm all for it. But maybe Franz wants a camera, a Sony A6 Triple X. Um sounds like a really good camera. Kind of the theory, money makes money. It's time. Yeah. Yeah, money makes money. Velocity, speed. I could tell. I could literally within 10 minutes of hanging out with someone, I can tell how successful they'll be. Either they're waiting and thinking about a bunch of stuff or they're like, yep, do it. Uh, we had a fast track client join yesterday. I was on a call with them in 10 minutes. He's like, yep, okay, done. And within 10 minutes, payment was made. He was in. And when I look at the history of his life, there is a reason why he's where he's at. He doesn't F around. I've seen some people, dude, it's like three months and they send the same email every month. I'm still thinking about it. I'm like, dude, it's, 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 it's like, it's, it's, it's the price of a coffee per day. Like, how long do you have to keep thinking about it? And I'm, I'm, it's cool. Like, keep consuming free stuff. But, like, when your body knows, and it might not even be this, I'm like, what are the decisions we're waiting on making in life beyond crypto labs? I don't care. Make a yes or no today. Move on it. It's either a yes or a no, not a, uh, I'll kind of think about it. Because that is robbing you of life force that could be used to actually see forward momentum in life. Um, Robbing you of it. Dude, I've known people who are like, oh, I'll probably get into crypto when Bitcoin was 18K, but they keep thinking about it. Now Bitcoin's 68K and they're still thinking about it. I'm like, and they're going to get in when it's 140 because they're finally going to be ready and then they're going to get dumped on. And I'm like, don't be that. Just don't be that. Anywho, okay, I'm going to get out of here and jump on the call D's that David is holding and I want to be in the comments to support. But what I will do is I'm going to drop my Instagram. If anyone wants to connect personally, go check that out. Uh, that is my Instagram. It is new. Uh, I don't really post too much on it, but I like to post my thoughts. And sometimes I'll be writing an article in the UIG and I kind of talk about it on whatever it's called, Instagram. And um, and if you do want to check out the UIG, you can do so with that link there. But definitely hit me up on Instagram. Say hello. Shoot me a DM. Let me know you came from the live and I'll follow you back. I like to see people's personal behind the scenes lives. I don't get to do that very often. So it's kind of cool. And with that said, appreciate y'all. And I'll see you in the UIG. Uh, let's jump on the portfolio review call for those of you who are in it and 